Hello everyone, Nature here. Thank you for joining me for another Nature review. Um, just a quick update. I'm excited because I have this giant new monitor that a roommate gave me, and so like my camera is now at the top of my monitor, so you can just kind of get a get a you know idea of how large it is. That's great because now I can see everything really, really, really closely. Um, Today we're going to be looking at a video that I found that was sent to me by Kurai. Well, not really sent to me. He posted it in a couple discords that I've been added to for coaching. Um, this appears to be Anatoly here with the strap shield. And he's going to be fighting against a person listed in the intro of this video as No Name, I believe. So maybe just like No Name, you know. I don't know what that means. I watched a little bit of their fighting. And obviously this No Name person is competent so let's see what we got this video is like 10 minutes long so we're not going to review the whole thing because you know me i would end up making like a 45 minute long video so the quick gear checks we have uh kind of similar sized rounds it looks like this punch round might be a little bit smaller but we have punch round versus strap round I'm a punch guy myself, so I'm always excited to see how other people use theirs. He has a much more a mobile punch uh, guard than I do. Trying just a couple of leads from real far outside. And I kind of I skipped to the middle of this video and uh, watched some of the fighting. And these two dudes are very cautious. Very little combos being thrown, a lot of just movement from range, trying to set things up. And like, as much as that like can be not so fun to watch, in my opinion, uh, you get to set up some really cool things like this. If you're if you're if you're limber and fast enough to pull off like these lunges, and I think that Anatoly here gets kind of helped out because Blue Shirt Fighter is also stepping in at the same time. So it really just makes this lunge that Anatoly is doing that much better with the fact that his opponent is also lunging into him. In this little reverse wrap money shot, I'm not quite sure what people are going to want to call that one. But uh, I might send this little section to Angus because he was asking me, how do you set up a reverse wrap? And I was trying to show him something kind of like this. Just this little, little top side movement, then throwing in, and it's a very... I believe safe shot to throw because your hand from guard so he's kind of down here I wouldn't call this his passive guard right here is like where he's going to be in guard for this uh, shot his hand once in that position doesn't change position that dramatically and it stays not it doesn't get super extended it stays pretty close to the edge of the shield and something I've talked about in a lot of my videos when I'm watching guys uh, throw things like this or throw really deep in the lefty v righty board matchup is either shield way too far in front so like you're blocking your own striking lane or shield way too far back as you're extending your striking uh, arm and exposing your forearm this is nice. You kind of want to have just a tiny slot here that gives you a nice space to have wrist mobility. <coughs> while also protecting your uh, wrist and hand. Couple trades of cross shots here. Yeah, this is this is this is a style. We'll, we'll go ahead and just say this is like emblematic of the style of these guys, because I've kind of seen it here in the beginning of the video and also deep into it. Very very uh, extreme range exchanges. This does move into like a closer range exchange, but it starts very far away. We kind of have this trade of high crosses. Anatoly here, though, throws that. Not so much like a super high cross, but like this coming up and under sort of crossing motion. 
which I think is super solid against other guys who are going to be high crossing you. I still would prefer to dark side high crossing fighters, but that's probably easier for me to do with a punch shield. And I'm also just curious, like, every time I see a shield fighter get high cross, yeah, I think it's always just a problem with a bad guard. Um, good, good shield guards, I think, should passively block a high cross. But if we're looking at Blue Shirt's guard here, we already have this gap here. And remember, this exchange started initially way, way, way back, right? A lot of space here between these dudes. And I'm just trying to kind of track Blue Shirt's shield, see what it's doing. I can understand not having your shield in the equation when you're super far out, but if you're within range to throw threatening shots, and I think he's at, like, just barely within range to hit maybe forearms and, like, shins, you know, it might be time to begin engaging your shield. His shield comes in a little bit late, he's staying kind of low, and even as he steps in, He's kind of making this, he's making this A-frame, right? And Anatoly just has a very nice response of throwing a shot that comes right up that A-frame channel. Um, I think that as a punch shield fighter, you have, like, the least excuse to ever dig a high cross out of all, like, you know, shield strapping options. Because it's so easy to tuck in. And even then, you don't have to tuck in if your sword's in a good position. Like, if, if his hand... If his hand, like, wasn't back here against his chest, but was, like, projected out where, like, his shield is, if his hand was more, you know, out here in front of his sternum, just clogging up this lane, much less chance that this shot works. And it looks like Anatoly may have called trade there. Blue Shirt's high cross may have come in. And again, so this is, so, so this is something that I've talked about a lot, and something that I want to start seeing now, if these guys are just going to be high crossing each other often, one of them needs to decide to start high cross or, or dark siding first, or doing little cross chops first. Like you can't you can't just sit there and machine gun high quadrant shots against each other. You know you just eventually you guys are just using the same tools when you one of you could really just be you know doing something a little different there. What am I trying to say? I got distracted. Um, if you're sitting there machine gunning high crosses with somebody, you're, you're only choosing to, like, compete in one very small avenue of uh, possible, like, fighting. And so, yeah, I'm interested to see if these guys start dark siding more, and I'm interested to watch this exchange. We kind of got this mid-grip on the weapon now from our punch grip fighter, I believe this is emblematic of trying to adopt both a more defensive guard at range and a more active striking style at, in, inside the pocket. Yeah, didn't get the forearm there. See, this is kind of a cool thing, a cool tricky thing I've seen some folks through here recently. This dark side from way out of range that comes like back across for the shield arm, and I think this, or the shield shoulder, and I think this is really cool. It's very tricky. The, the, this shot would kill me for quite a while until I got used to it, because when I see somebody go dark like this, I'm expecting a shot to my hip pocket, or maybe rarely guys will throw the shot that I also really like, which is coming in this vertical kind of wheeling strike to the top of that quadrant, coming up instead of like coming in flat or like rolling over flat. You come in nice and high. Um... I would have to work really hard to get to the point where I would expect this because I would stuff my fucking uh, weapon at least and probably my weapon and shield the first couple of times to block my low right quadrant and get sniped there. But instead, Homeboy kind of just throws this without much setup. And I think this is a very strange shot to lead on. Whole lot of body motion involved here, whole lot of commitment, whole lot of weight transfer, whole lot of like raising your center of gravity. And this is not like, this, this, this is dope to set up. Like if you have a way to set this up, like maybe you throw that, you throw that dark side or you throw that money shot a couple of times, 
to get inside of your opponent's head, and then whenever you go dark and they try to stuff their hip pocket and you come across and hit them up here, that's pretty sick. Maybe these fighters have a relationship where they, 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 they already have that, he, Blue Shirt here thinks he might already have that programming set in with Anatoly, but strange shot to open on. Did it work though? That's like twice now. That's like twice now I've called this dude out on shots that I thought were complete whiffs. Yeah, it's hard to tell. I think everything I st I think I'm going to stick by my opinion though. I like that shot. I don't like it when it's not set up. That's kind of one of the dark side leads I like to throw a whole lot. It even looks like Anatoly is like almost maybe like setting for a spin right here. Then doesn't. Almost picks up the, the arm. Yeah, and this is very nice. I, I, I like this shot a whole lot. I, well, I, I, like, I like going for shield side shoulder. I like that, that quadrant a whole lot. And we see uh, something kind of going on here that I've, I think I've pointed out a few times now, where the better the fighter is, the less of a fake you need to get them to buy it. Right? Like, this fake to get Blue Shirt's fi uh, shield out of the way is just Anatoly's weapon dropping down vertical and coming back up. It's not a strike. It makes no contact. Let's just go back and watch it in slow-mo. Yep, just a little pump down. Does it have to come over the top? Pick up the shield and arm. If Anatoly had taken his whole, if Anatoly had like chambered and then gone all the way down as part of his fake, Blue Shirt would probably never have thought that. It's way too obvious. The fact that it's this just little doop, poop, good. I normally will fake across and then come back as like my setup. I should probably experiment with also just like going straight down and then going in. Yeah, I'm having this problem with giving feedback on problem with giving feedback on Anatoly that I've had with like a few fighters who are uh, much more solid than I am. It's hard to pick out specific things that I would like Anatoly to work on better because I think one of the things that's really identifiable about higher tier fighters is they just give you less like they give you less data in general. Um, they will usually react less to your shots. They buy less fakes. Their guard is more firm and in like a better position. That's those are, that's like, like a combination of things that generally makes somebody better than you. And just having less feedback to go off of makes it harder to coach. And I know it's all relative. Like if I if I was watching two fighters, you know, of the same skill level, I'd be more blatant. I'm not saying these guys are vastly different in skill level, but I am noticing more things going on with Blue Shirt's um, guard, his style, the way he's choosing to throw his shots. There's a lot of movement. There's a lot of slops. With uh, this, this almost feels like somebody Blue Shirt almost feels like somebody who has like primarily fought single blue or something, and do, or flow, and doesn't quite know where the shield's going yet. 
Or maybe maybe Strap Shield is just phenomenal at picking this particular guy apart. And also, again, their scores aren't that far off, as far as I can tell. They've been doing quite evenly against each other. But, like, you know, stuff like this. I don't know if I've seen uh, our Strap Shield fighter do something like this in the whole exchange, okay? This guard goes way low for really no reason. It's just kind of like he's not paying attention to it. And then throws... Like, 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 right there. Why, 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 why is this happening? Like, are you setting up this three shots that are, like, never going to do anything at that range? Just, just feel like there's a little bit more nerviness and looseness coming out of our punch grip fighter. Once again, did they pick that up? It looks like they might have. Loses the shield arm, and then, yeah, you're just on top of them and keep throwing. Um, yeah. Now I'm starting to maybe see some things that could be done better from our strap user here. Planting and standing right here. It doesn't look super intentional. It looks like, because he breaks immediately back into footwork. Uh, when somebody just kind of charges in on you like this, I don't think you can, like, Stand still and become more vertical. You're just gonna get ran down. Maybe kind of getting into one of the things I saw about Curai, or was thinking about Curai, where it's like, you know, it's nice to be good and um, deceptive and motionless, like that good economy of motion uh, with how you fight. But I think sometimes maybe it leads to folks being a little bit too still and stationary. I mean, we, we, I can almost see Strap Shield here, like, shaking it out, maybe kind of realizing that. Like, alright, we gotta move a little bit more. Bounce around a little bit. Uh, so much range. Like, just guys exchanging at maximum range, then, like, lunging in. What's the shield doing with our, with our punch shield? Blocks a shot. Throws a shot, throws a shot, comes back over, and then just gets stuck there. Like, right now, I think that this shield should be traveling from the position it's at by his body. And coming back out with his arm. Like, okay, good. You did your job, shield. And then I think that you should be, as this shot's coming back from our strap fighter, this shield should start coming out here to defend. Um, one of the things I talk about a lot is, like, having a good guard that you snap back to really frequently. Um, I think this is one of the benefits of tr focusing on that, is in situations like this, your muscle memory, instead of, like, sticking where you just stuck that block at, will instead be resetting your shield back out to, like, a good uh, natural position. And the shield stays low, the arm stays exposed, meaning, the, meaning he's, like, kind of just opened up. Shield comes back over to defend this shot, and then never transitions back across. Where, like, if that shield hadn't been stuck against his body, moving back and forth with his arm on top of it, if after, like, blocking this quadrant over here, we had moved out, this plane, then we need less movement, and it's just like, you know, we, we, we are able to stop this chain of events in advance that leads to this shot here, landing. Gonna do one more exchange here, this video is already about 20 minutes long. Was that the shield arm for real, real? The satisfying noise, too. What does that hit?
neat little dark side here. I guess kind of money shot, but yeah, yeah, dark side. Come under, yeah. Almost picked up the side of the body. And then it looks like Blue Shirt again picks it up. Looks like he might. That looks like he might have picked that one up also. I'm not quite sure on that one. It's always hard to tell when the fighters are both facing and like once you know your fate one of them has their back to you. But yeah, I feel kind of awkward having given so much feedback on this blue-shirted fighter while he's just consistently picking up a good number of kills. But that's all I got. Thanks for watching.